everyone and a very warm welcome back to my channel so today we're doing what I deem a simple task but um, also a very tedious task something you need to pay a lot of attention to when you're doing it is the actual changing of my rotors and my pads so I'll be guiding you guys step through step how to do this I need you guys to follow it step by step to ensure that you don't make any mistakes or don't leave any parts out as this is essential to your safety in this car. We need to open our brake fluid reservoir as we'll need to separate the pot from the pads itself because everything is worn and we'll need to get it open positioned. When we do this what will happen is a lot of the brake fluid will then push back into the system as you can see it's full here so I will need to take some of that out because it will overflow so first what you would like to do is actually to turn your wheel all the way so that your caliper is as far out this way as possible next you'll need a jack support and block off your wheels at the back this one will be raised slightly but my opposite side is blocked off as well so next what we'll be doing is there you guys can see the pot that's pressing on the pad itself we will be pressing that inwards to release the pot from the floating caliper so this piece moves I'll show you just now and when we do this it'll push all the brake fluid back into the system and it'll go to the reservoir so between the rotor and the pad we'll press this in and we'll wedge it and you'll see it releases the pot can see that it is a floating caliper next what we'll be doing is if you look here at the rear you'll see this little cap push the caliper all the way that side this will become flexible it's just a cap release that and behind that you will see is an allen key so this will be the allen key that you release at the bottom behind this cap is another one those two will release and the caliper will detach So these are the pins, make sure they've got no wear, no pitting, no rust on them as the caliper floats on this. If this is rusted, what will happen is this will get stuck in a position and your pads will wear unevenly. The final thing to release the caliper, the floating caliper, is this tensioner we've got here. What you need to do is to actually press it up and out up and then you pull it out and that will release it now your caliper should be free and your pads can come out next what you need to do is you need to release the cradle which is held on by two bolts here at the back as you can see mounted at these points last thing to release your router is an allen key right there and this is just to keep the rotor in place
that you guys can see. Now this is loose. The only thing holding this in place is rust. As you can see, there's the line. So this is just fixed on by rust. This is also the reason why I use copper compound. Or anti-seize so that this does not happen. Try not to get any anti-seas in the these holes as this is the holes that your rim attaches to and you do not want them coming loose on their own. Next is our new rotor, which this doesn't matter which side you put it, you can put it either side. And then put the little grub screw back. I do not have a torque wrench if you do not have one either. Tighten this as much as you can. So I'll be standing up. Next what we'll be moving on to is the brake pad with the pins at the back, at the rear. Those pins will go into the cup or into the pot. You'll place that on and that will sit basically like that again. So the opposite side, you'll just put it into place. And it should slide over. Now this old assembly is still loose, so we'll use the retainer clip, hook it in on the one side, and the opposite side you'll pull down, keep there, and press it back into place. When that is done, you clean your pins and put a little bit of anti-seize on it. Now you can press it back into its place. As well so just give it a firm pull next we'll be putting the dust caps back at the rear of that floating pins and that just presses into place next we'll be putting in the wear, wear sensor which basically indicates once your brake pads are finished and it's metal to metal it will show a light on your dash which then would indicate that you need to replace your pads just like that and it's basically this gap that you see here that you pressed on with to take the previous one out take off this cap you'll see there's actually a there's a small hexagon which will fit over that and that will just be to keep it in place properly and you put the cap back on this piece will then go to the back here 
behind the stabilizer and click into that gap. Can you still see? Mm -hmm. And your new wear sensor will clip into this. You'll see on the wire is two retainers, one on the thicker tube and one on the angle. The angle goes into the box, the thicker ones goes in onto the body. So there's the body anchor, you clip it onto there, you'll open up the box, can you see the box? Mm -hmm. You'll open up the box, click it back into place, put the connection into the box and just close it up. Everywhere you touch, just wipe it off, not with any chemical. Just wipe it off with a cloth that you touched on the rotor. You don't want any oil on this. And that is from start to finish how to replace your brake pads and your rotor for your front section of the car. Next, we'll move to the rear. This you will duplicate on the other side. Next we'll be moving on to the rear. Now this is very important. To do the rear you'll have to release your handbrake. So either make sure your car standing on a very flat surface with the wheels chopped off on that side or I don't have a flat surface, I'm standing at an angle so I'll be chocking off both wheels that side. And then I'll be releasing my handbrake and working on the rear. First what we'll be doing here once again is the retainer clip. is once again just wedge it in between the pad and the, and, and the rotor you can do it from either side since this is also a floating caliper as you can see next we'll be loosening the caliper floating pins difference you can see between the front rotor and the rear rotor that it has the brake barrels for the handbrake which you see here and that squeezes out on the inside here keeping the car stationary Next we'll be reinstalling the cal uh, carrier. We will be taking the pad with the pins that will go inside the pot and press it in.
and the opposite side will just slide into place. We'll take the retainer clip, hook it in on the one side, press, pull it down and press it into place. We'll be cleaning our sliding pins and coating them with some anti-seize. And then last, we'll put back the dust caps. And if I open up that box, there you will see me pulling out the sensor cable which this is my ABS sensor or my speed wheel sensor which is also laying outside with cable ties not how you're supposed to do it we'll disconnect that pressing in that little clip which is located here at the top and then just giving it a firm tug look at this pattern you see here looks like a little mushroom and then you look inside your connector you'll see the same mushroom make sure they line up correctly when you press that into place I'll be loosening the cable ties and I'll be putting both of those sensors connectors back into the box how it's supposed to be sorry space is a bit limited yeah might not be able to see everything this you'll have to feel where those retainer clips goes into like I said, space are limited. And the same for our ABS sensor. Once they're both in the box, we'll be closing that up. Yeah, and that. What's up in there? Another one, It's recording. So next what you guys want to do before you take your car out on the road is just to start up your car and press your brake pedal a few times so that your you can actually feel that your brakes are engaging and that it's locking up before you go onto the road. Then what you want to do is to just check that here on your reservoir bottle that you are still between your minimum and your max line. 
I'll be showing you guys next how you're going to run in these new brakes and rotors. Okay everyone, so like I explained to you, when you replace your rotors and your pads, you need to run in your rotors and your pads. How you do that is you get up to a speed of about 45 miles an hour, which is about 70 kilometers an hour. When you're at that speed, you want to slowly apply pressure to your brakes and come to a dead halt. Once you've done that, that is just to release any of the compounds that is coated on your rotors and on your pads. When you finish running that, that you need to do once. When that is finished, get to a place where you can accelerate to about 60 miles an hour, which is a, approximately 100 kilometers an hour. And you want to aggressively brake from 100 to zero and accelerate again to 100 to zero and you're repeatedly doing this until you can smell your brakes when you smell your brakes you activate all your compounds and you harden your compounds which is on your brake pad itself this will ensure your brake pads not to uh, induce scoring and also to wear evenly and give you more efficient stopping power so we'll be doing that next that is one already i can smell it after the first pull That is two. Pretty soon you'll start seeing smoke coming in. I can actually start smelling the compound now. There you can actually see the smoke coming off of the pads. These are now properly run in. From this point on, you have completed installing your rotors and your pads and running them in. Your car is now as safe as it can be with your new pads and new rotors. And I hope you guys will stay tuned for the next videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It makes it easier for other people to see. And subscribe if you're not subscribed. Welcome to the channel if this was your first video. Cheers, guys.